Hi everybody, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Life Coaching. And I have, I think, a video that will prove helpful in this really difficult worldwide nightmare that we find ourselves in, this surreal, dark, crazy place. It's like we've developed a whole new vocabulary that we didn't have before. So the name of this video is 10 Fresh Ways to Self-Source During Social Isolation. I think for me and for a lot of people, one of the most difficult things about this pandemic is just the not knowing. It's like, when are we going to be free to go to a sporting event or to get on an airplane or to go to a restaurant or to hang out with our friends? Will it be middle of May or middle of June or the end of August? Um, what is this going to do to our economy? What is it going to do to your own personal economy? Um, I've heard from a lot of sources, and I believe it from my own work with clients um, using teleconferencing, is I believe that there's a mental health epidemic of people really struggling with being confined, being confined with people that you have a lot of unresolved and explosive issues with, worrying, um, fearing that you might get this virus, um, financial pressure, having the kids around. There's so many things, not being able to do your stuff. Why do you have to self-source now as never before? Because all your cool stuff is gone. You can't go to the gym. You can't go to church. Um, you can't even get a massage. Um, I can't go play basketball. There's so many ways that we take care of ourselves that we sort of took for granted that we cannot practice right now. But you can do this. You can evolve into thriving in your new normal. This is about homeostasis. In my office office, which I haven't been to but one time in three weeks, I have a mobile of a family. And when I'm working with a couple, I might go over there and tap that mobile. And when I tap the mobile, what happens is it starts, it's a, it's a mobile of a family, a, a, a three-generational family, and everybody's all out of kilter, everybody's out of whack. But eventually, the mobile goes right back where it was. And I think what's happening is we're getting our groove on. We're, we're adjusting to the new normal. When we were adjusting early on to the old normal, we really missed the old normal because it was a lot more fun. It was a lot more free. But the cool thing is you can adjust to the new normal and have homeostasis and thrive in a different way of thriving. You know the movie Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts? Um... This is sort of like the universe has, has sent us to the prey part where we're all in our own solitary Buddhist, uh, uh, you know, monarch, what, what's it called? <laughs> a Buddhist place where you go and hang out. Uh, there's a word for it. Uh, my, my brain has been just a little bit fuzzy in all of this. Monastery, yes! <laughs> It's like we're in a in a Buddhist monastery and we're not supposed to talk and we can't interact and we're trying to find ourselves. The universe has stuck all of us. We're not in the love part. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk further. We can be a little bit in the eat part, 
but mainly we're in the prey part. We're finding ourselves in our own Buddhist monastery. Mine is in my condo. Mine, uh, I'm mostly all alone. Sometimes my daughter comes over and twice a week my assistant comes over. So I do see actual human beings twice a week, three times a week, four times a week. Um, but most of the time I'm alone here with just me and Mr. Polly, my beagle. So the universe is giving you the best opportunity in your whole lifetime to learn how to self-source. What is self-sourcing? Self-sourcing is taking care of yourself. It's finding ways to bring joy and creativity and positivity to a dark, negative, lonely situation. It's hanging out with yourself and feeling good about it. It's sourcing your God and being spiritual. It's also self-sourcing is also appropriately getting your emotional needs met in your relationship and by your friends and by your family. But it's real limited in how you can do that currently. So uh, I called this 10 fresh ways and most of them are fresh. A couple of them aren't so fresh, but they had a cool story to them. So the first fresh way to self-source during social, social isolation is try not to do too much. On Saturday here, we had a wonderful day of weather where it was 63 and sunny. And that may not sound so wonderful to you, but that's the best we've had in a long time. And uh, I rode my bicycle. I shot baskets. I walked my dog. I hung out by the, the pond and the fountain, and I spoke with my wife for a long time. It was a wonderful day. But I was sort of go, 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 going. Also, something that I think that, that we might carry to this is I, I was just having too many Zoom meetings. I had a Zoom meeting for yoga. I had a Zoom meeting for meditation. I had a therapist I was working with in Australia. I had a local therapist. Uh, I started with another therapist. I had I was in pain, so I was looking for answers. I was, really what I was looking for was to be sued by somebody else. And since then, I've canceled all those meetings except one therapist. And I'm learning how to soothe and source myself rather than trying to suck some poor therapist dry. So relax. Um, Sunday, after my great best day on Saturday, I was so wired up from all the doing too much that I didn't get enough sleep. And then Sunday, Easter Sunday, I woke up and I was, I was shaving my head and I cut a big chunk off the back of my head with a new razor and I bled all over the place and I should have just got back in bed and I didn't feel good. And I tuned in to a couple of church services and I felt spiritually left out. I, I felt spiritually hungry and displaced. Um, the, the places that I tuned in, I didn't really fit. So it was like Easter, but what a crappy Easter that felt like. Um, then I, I was interacting with technology and technology went wacky and didn't work, which is frustrating. Um, my daughter came over and we were going to have a meal together and her meal got canceled. And then Mr. Polly smelled the food and he came walking in and he peed all over the place. And if I had hair, I would have pulled it out. But the real problem with Easter Sunday was that I did too much on Saturday. That I was trying to be healthy so hard 
that I didn't really take care of my body. So last night I got a wonderful night of sleep and I woke up with all kinds of brain cells and all kinds of positive energy. So one fresh way to self-source is pace yourself and try not to do too much even when it's sunny and nice outside. The second fresh way is pay it forward. The other day I was sitting by the pond and my debit card fell out of my shorts and was lost. I didn't even know it was lost, but then I got a call from my neighbor who happened to be in the same building just down the hallway. Mears is his name. And he returned my debit card. Uh, he didn't make any charges on it and he returned it. And I had just lost and had that debit card replaced. So it would have been a bummer to have it uh, be lost again. But um, I felt so grateful that somebody had gone out of their way and did, did something for me. So then two days later, I happened to notice a young man's driver's license uh, sitting in our lobby. Somebody had found it, but that's all the further they were going to take it. They just left it in the lobby. So I thought, I'm going to pay it forward. I picked it up. And of course, anything you touch these days, you assume it's covered with um, the virus and um, that, that you're going to be infected. So I brought it in. I washed my hands. I disinfected his driver's license. And I was going to do my best to locate this young man. I looked up his address and all it said was that house isn't for sale. Okay. So then I looked up his name and it turns out his name was Dallas Green. And it turns out that he is a college basketball player. He plays for Robert Morris University. And I looked at the picture of the guy on the website of Robert Morris University and looked at the picture on the driver's like same guy. So uh, I didn't know how to get a hold of him. He didn't have a phone number, but there's the magic of Facebook. I looked him up on Facebook. I mes messaged him. Ten minutes later, I get a phone call. Thirty minutes later, I'm uh, in the presence of Mr. Dallas Green, and he was so happy, he reached out his hand to shake my hand, and I looked at him in terror and fright and said, I ain't shaking your hand. And he goes, oh, and he, he said, we got to do this. And he, he put out his elbow, and we elbow bumped, and then he put out his ankle, and we ankle bumped. So it was cool. It was joyful. It, it was just nice to pay it forward. I was going to, uh, I suggested to my wife that I wasn't going to give him his driver's license back unless we had a shootout. This guy's about 6'7", but he looks like a, like a forward, looks, looks more like a, a power forward kind of guy. And I think I could outshoot him. <laughs> I was telling myself I could. Uh, but it turns out if you shoot a basketball with somebody, you can get cooties on the basketball. You, you, can, you can get the virus even on a surface of a basketball is what I've told, I'm told. So I shoot by myself. So it remains to be seen. I'm a pretty good shooter, but but he probably would have smoked me. He was all tatted up all over the place, looked like a superstar. Pay it forward. Number three, this is the most important one. Do your best to stay in your adult self and not regress into your little kid self. I've been reading a book called Growing Yourself Back Up by a guy named John Lee. Um, last night, uh, after my horrible Easter and my lack of self-care, I was so busy taking care of myself that I wasn't taking care of myself. So I was tired. Uh, I felt like I had a chest cold. Um, I was talking myself into I was dying. <laughs> I was regressing as a little kid. And I typed to my wife, I think I'm dying. And, and, and she finally, you know, 
attended to the little kid, which she's sick of doing, and I don't blame her. When we're in pain, many of us who've been through um, narcissistic abuse, who grew up being abused or abandoned as children, um, or uh, those of us who, who have um, uh, complex PTSD, um, our little kid comes out and we become primitive and we, uh, we, can, we can let the little kid ruin our lives because we're too whiny, we're too dependent, we're too reactive. What, what I've been learning how to do uh, in my marriage and in my life is to not take things so personally and to not be as afraid and to spend more time in my adult self than spending in my little infant self that's at the core of me. He doesn't have to run my life. Fresh way number four is instead of looking to be encouraged by your friends and your family, look to encourage. I guess it was John F. Kennedy said, do not ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. The other day, Saturday, when I was feeling so wonderful and I was biking, I would stop and I texted most of my friends and I, I used that, that approach. How are you? What's going on with you? And my friend Tim was having a really bad day and I sent him some encouragement and some positive energy and he was like, dude, thank you. You turned around my day. And I had spent most of my new friendship with him being in my infant self and I think I had become quite a drain. So don't do that. Spend time in your adult self and look to give, look to serve. Look to be in your adult self and see what you can do in terms of encouragement with family and friends. Fresh take number five ways to self-source is be careful to take your physical and your emotional temperature. Ask yourself, what do I need? The sun was out on Saturday, and as it was going down, I thought, I'm going to get back on my bicycle and go around in circles, but it was getting cold. And I found myself getting really tired, but I didn't go rest. Sometimes when you take your temperature, you need to talk with a friend. Sometimes you need to rest. Sometimes you need to play. Sometimes you need to work. Sometimes you need to cry. Sometimes you need to dance. There's a biblical verse that says, you know, there's a time and a season for everything. There is a time to weep and there is a time to dance, but you won't know what time it is unless you are in your own skin. And that's what social, social isolation gives you an opportunity to do, is spend time in your own skin. Because you don't have anything else to do unless you're drinking and unless you're binging TV and you're numbing yourself out. And, and that would be a real loss of opportunity. This, this is a time to learn. How, you can't meet your needs until you know what your needs are. Are. Fresh take number six. My son is an executive who works for DoorDash. He lives in San Francisco. He's a money guy. He's a finance guy. He raises their capital. He raises uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to add to a company that's worth billions of dollars. And I never had really used his product much, but I'm being serious. I know many of you may, maybe can't afford to send away for some DoorDash, but many of you can. And 
rather than slaving away cooking and doing dishes, um, if you get a dash pass, um, you can get a, an amazing restaurant meal, usually brought to your house within 20, 25 minutes for not much money. It's really not much. When you have that pass, they waive the delivery fees and uh, other fees that, uh, related to it. And I'm just saying, you're going through a worldwide nightmare. You're Many of you are all alone. You can't do like 14 out of your 15 ways of self-caring for yourself because you can't leave the house. Give yourself a break and um, get yourself something yummy to eat and something where you won't have to do a lot of work. And if you can afford to do that, uh, do it. Um, I got to tell you, my life over the past five days has been made so much easier and so much more enjoyable just through the magic of DoorDash. I'm just saying. Number seven, this one isn't so fresh because every every video I've watched on uh, taking care of yourself during social isolation has t said take up a new hobby. And But I want to tell you a story. My best friend, Fred, uh, I texted him on Saturday. Hey, how you doing? How you uh, dealing with this social isolation? He goes, well, I'm going to Bloomington tomorrow. And I said, well, what's in Bloomington? He goes, my mom's friends and family. No, he, she said, he said, my mom's family members. And I became concerned. And what I did was uh, challenge him on that. And I said, Fred, that's not social isolating. You going to see your mother's family. And he's taken up genealogy. And he said, Mark, all the people I'm going to see are in the cemetery. They're all dead. And, and I said, see? They weren't social isolating correctly and they died. But you should see the way my friend perks up. And one thing he said is, is he's using this as a vacation that he's never had a chance to relax so much in his adult life as now. And he is having a blast, enjoying searching out his roots. So... Uh, resurrect an, a new old hobby or come up with a new hobby altogether and allow yourself to play. Uh, fresh way number eight, this is also not very fresh, give yourself permission to veg out. Uh, my wife signed us up for YouTube TV and we're saving hundreds of dollars now on our cable bill. We don't have any cable anymore. And the product is actually better than cable and there's tons of movies and it's really super convenient and super cool. But my nature is not to rest, not to allow myself time to just take care of myself and, and, and just chill and rest. And yesterday I finally crashed and burned during my bad Easter day and I rested and I was calm and I fell asleep and I renewed myself. So give yourself permission to veg out. Number nine is reconnect with your pets. Mr. Polly is 13. You might be able to hear him in the background. He's sitting over there with his diaper on. And he, he really wasn't functioning well. When I, when I had to go into an office, it was really hard on him. When I had to get on an airplane, it was really hard on him and hard on me. And I had actually made an appointment to have Mr. Polly put down. But now that we're in social isolation and I don't leave the house um, very much, I leave the house to walk him. Uh, today I brought him outside and it was a little cold and he did his business and he looked at me and said, dude, it's cold. Let's go back in. Um, but he's been a wonderful companion for over 13 years now. And um, I'm glad I'm getting this time to reconnect because he's not going to be with this too much longer. 
And number 10 fresh way to self-source is do something creative. I got to talk with my marketing guy and he's my coach and he's my inspiration. And um, I had no intention of making this video today, but giving some, some inspiration from the universe and um, a way to think about paying it forward and helping people uh, is fun. The, I gotta tell you, making this video is probably the best part of my week. Because it's, 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 it's a way to be creative and it's a way to help people. So 10 fresh ways to self-source. Don't try to do too much. Pay it forward. Stay in your adult self. Encourage your friends and family rather than looking to be encouraged. Take your emotional and your physical temperature. Treat yourself to some DoorDash. Invest in a new or a renewed hobby. Give yourself permission to just veg out, reconnect with your pets, and do something creative. We're going to get through this, and life will be normal. But be in your present and get as much joy, get as much depth, and get as much personal insight and spirituality as you can squeeze from this nightmare and let's take a nightmare and turn it into something that is also a blessing thank you for watching everybody stay safe and stay true to your social isolation boundaries and god bless